Constitution Join the revolution Lawful rebellion Now write the British Constitution We stand for a future we control Our heritage lies in free men's souls We fight to conquer Britain's foes The British Constitution The British Constitution Hello Hello Roger, it's Jim, how are you doing? Oh, hello, Jim. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. I got you on uh, a little ten minutes later than planned uh, because I was just playing the the TV license clip where um, a couple of things I wanted to bring up with you uh, before we talk about your uh, lawful bank. And uh, I know you've been involved in the latest court case. We were chatting last week, but I just wanted to get your take on this. Uh, There was um, a TV license person turning up at door with a policeman. The policeman was there in case there was a breach of the peace, but as long as the people were peaceful, there should be no need for the police to interfere because the police in his own words said uh, we're here for criminal matters and TV licences is a civil matter so by law they shouldn't get involved and that policeman once this was explained to him he didn't get involved so that was a good copper right Roger? Yeah absolutely I mean uh, um, obviously what's happening now is the police are watching these videos um, so so the people who are standing up to these they're not bailiffs by the way they're debt collectors okay so it's an important distinction they, they may be registered at as bailiffs said, the, the local court, but okay. they're not acting in the capacity as a bailiff there and then, and, and this is a very important point. The whole process is, is, is different. This was so a just, TV uh, licence guy. This was a guy who wanted yeah. to check a home yeah. for a, uh, to see if a person had a TV. Now, it's interesting because he said, I want to see if I can search, search your house for a TV, but it's legal to have a TV. It's just illegal, or, or should we say unlo- or, or should we say against the BBCs that you need a TV licence to watch live television, but you don't need a, li- a television licence to just have a TV in your house. That's correct, isn't it? So that's right. I mean, the, 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 the pros and cons, I think they've muddied the waters a little bit now, but, but the bottom line is that they have no right to enter your home. Mm. And if you have a, if you like, a contractual issue with the BBC, for example, they're not upholding their charter, which a lot of people believe that's the case, in other words, they're biased, the BBC have themselves admitted they've been biased, and, and therefore they're in breach of their contract. So, you know, if you are in disagreement with the way the BBC has been behaving, and there's, there's, there's probably a thousand and one issues that, that we could raise, but we won't go there, um, <laughs> then you have a, an absolute um, lawful right to refuse to pay the license until such times as they, they've uh, addressed the, 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 the matters. And if you write to the BBC and complain, um, they won't answer these matters, and I think that's appalling. It is appalling. My own personal take is uh, don't watch their programming. I, d- I don't get involved with it. You know, um, I'm not going to write to them and say you're not upholding your charter. It's it'd be like you know King Canute trying to stop the tide. You know, of course they're banker owned propagandists. You know, uh, these are the people that told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. You know, the, it, 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 would you buy a car from these people? Would you buy a car from known liars? You know, if you had someone that continually lied to you and over and over again, would you buy a car from them next door? You know, I wouldn't buy a car from them, so I wouldn't do business with them. I just don't want these people in my life. So I choose deliberately not to watch their broadcasts. Well, people, people, of course, have got to make their own choice as, as to whether they, they want to watch the BBC and if they want to pay the licence fee, but also people have the right to protest if, mm. if, if they feel that the BBC is breaking the law. And it would be very nice to be able to think that you could go into a court and, and put your case to, to, the, to the judge and say, look, this is, my, this is what I believe, and, and, and we had upstanding judges who would rule on the, on the balance of the issues, but they don't. Um, the courts are the problem. The courts themselves will just rubber stamp any claims that are made by utility companies, by councils, and by the BBC. Any institution, you're guaranteed that the courts will rubber stamp it. Um, and I think that's one of the, the big issues that, that we are highlighting now is, is that the courts themselves are fundamentally um, out of control. Um, they are now pushing through an agenda, um, a, a court um, a court which is actually not a court, it's an, it's an administrative hearing, and in our courts now, you actually can't get a common law court hearing, which is completely wrong. Yep, yep. Um, speaking of which, um, we there's two court cases you're involved in that I'd like to speak to you about. Um, the first was uh, for our listeners from last year about your court case from last year where they arrested you 
without a correct warrant and then you asked for a copy of the warrant and uh, it disappeared uh, so how is that court case going uh, just to uh, you know keep our listeners updated with that okay okay well what what i'm involved in a couple of court cases <laughs> and we are we're learning about tactics yeah. and the last one i was in um uh, we, we asked that the chief constable um be brought to the court because of the behavior of his police officers um you know vicarious liability etc etc and this was the first time ever i'd actually brought this claim of, against any police officers and the judge went through the tick list yes there's a crime committed yes this has been done yes that's been done um however i'm not going to rule in your favor because it's vexatious <laughs> because now, <it's> what <laughs> vexatious you know i'm i'm you know i was described as it, it, which means I'm, I'm, I'm just continually going back to the courts and doing this, that, and the other, which is, of course, it's a complete nonsense. Is that legal? Uh, you know, uh, uh, hello, I found it. You, you couldn't find that in, a, like, let's say, a, a murder case or something like that. Yes, we've had a fine committed. Yes, we've had uh, that. Uh, yes, but I'm not going to sentence you or put you away for murder because I, I, I like you. I think you're all right. You know, <laughs> you wouldn't get a judge. Yeah, that. Is that legal? I mean, but the, the courts do not uphold the law. The, the courts are just now rubber stamping. It's all about money. That's why they want to administer uh, administrative hearings, not the courts. And what a lot of people don't realize is that we actually have a right to, to withheld our consent to these administrative hearings. But the principle is, is simply this. If, if you have a claim against somebody and you can't reach a compromise, you can't reach agreement about what the argument is, that then you... you, you organized for a, a referee and that's what the, the the courts are designed to do provide a mechanism to avoid violence and, and so on and so forth so the judge is a referee but if you feel that the the, the actual court system is not going to be uh, unbiased or biased against you for example if the judge was a mason and the other party was a mason i, I feel that you'd be very very just in saying well i'm sorry i, I somehow think that because they swear a, an allegiance to each other i'm going to get a biased hearing and, and a lot of people have complained about that. Mm. So we have a right to actually say no to the courts. Um, you know, how and, and, and the, the wherefore of, of, of how we say no is, is something that people need to sort of study before they go in. Um, I've certainly done it. I, I did it in the High Court last week and caused all sorts of um, trauma in there. And it, it, Marvellous. It, you know, before, before we get into that, I just want to get back to that point. He ruled against you because he thought you were vexatious. Yeah, which is which complete. Not, what, what he was saying is, you know, we're right, but we're, we're, the, we're the authorities, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're just not going to budge. So, 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 what can you so do it, about that? You, I mean, that is that is huge. That is so, that is a court saying, you know what, you've you're legally right, Law uh, Roger, but um, sod you anyway. I mean, exactly. That's what, exactly what they're saying. How? But, no, that that can't be. I mean, it, it can't be that simple, can it? it we, you can't have just a, a judge saying, yeah. Go to hell! You can't, well, I mean, there has to be repercussions of that, haven't you? What, what well, we can there do should about? be, and there will be, but not at the moment. That you, there, there are no repercussions through the court system. Um, they are saying, "Too bad, we're in charge. Um, you don't like it, you know, whatever." Um, that's the position that we've got to, and we have wow. got to do something about that. And that's part of what the British Constitution Group is doing. It's getting into the courts and standing up to these judges. I mean, the vexatious. Um, argument that they put in in, in, in front of them, well, they put in front of me they do it all the time it's it's a it's a get out clause for them what a lot of people don't realize is that there's a memorandum of agreement between the courts and the police and and the the the, the, the memorandum of, of agreement is that the police will not take any action against the court whatsoever and the court won't take any action against the police whatsoever so they ring fence themselves it's a license to commit criminal activity if you're a policeman because, you, you know, you're not going to be, well, when I say you're a policeman if you're a senior constable because they're not going to take action because you know that, that they know the courts won't act against them, as, as was proven in this particular case. And even the police themselves don't understand their responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis the courts. And I'll give you a classic example. I complain to a chief inspector locally that the police removed me from my own court case one of my own court cases because i was arguing with the judge well i'm you know it's part of my right to, to give a robust 
argument in defence of my position. Of course and it is. I thought it turns right. into a Monty Python sketch. Uh, well, it, uh, it, are it, you it, guilty, it Roger? Funny. No, I'm not. You're guilty of arguing with me now. You know, that's a Monty Python sketch. Well, let me tell you what the argument was. I asked to cross-examine a witness who had just given witness against me, and he said no. And I said, you can't do that, at which point he, he, he indicated to the police behind me to remove me from the court. Now, he called police to the court initially to intimidate me. That didn't work. So the only, the only outcome of, of, of this was for him to get rid of me. So I actually laid a complaint with the, um, the, the, the chief inspector about the fact that these police officers didn't know what they were doing. Because I said, what was, my, what was my crime? And they said, we don't know. So why are you removing me from my own court hearing? I'm not, I'm not able to defend myself because the judge told us. I said, your job isn't to do just what the judge is, it, is telling you. Yes, it is. And this is the debate I had. And this, people should listen to this. It's a very, very important point. The police will say their job is that they're in service of the court. That's not right, right? If the court is upholding the law, they are in service of the court because the court is in service of the people. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the police are in service of the people. Yeah. When the courts are breaking the law, the, the priority is that the police must serve the people, and they, in fact, should have stood their ground and said, Your Honor, what's he done wrong? We can't remove him. But they don't know what they're doing, and, and, and that's the big problem that we've got. You've got this system now where young constables are, are, are being uh, brought into the system. They're not being taught about common law. They don't have a clue about our Constitution, about Magna Carta. All they're being told is that they must enforce legislation. But that's not their job. Their job is to uphold the law. It's a very, very big difference. Coming back to that, that, that you know, the, the police on the doorstep, and this is very important. A lot of people are putting their necks on the line and standing up to, to, these, to these bailers or these debt collectors pretending to be bailers. And thank goodness for the Internet. Thank goodness for videos because people are learning the law by virtue of people who are, who are standing up and challenging them. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I recommend anybody to, to, to have a go at the court. Always be polite, but be assertive because it's part of our democratic right to challenge the, the, the judges, to challenge the courts, to challenge the system. Because if you don't challenge it, that's when it starts going wrong. And that's, that's the problem we've got at the moment. It has gone very, very badly wrong. Yes, it has. I, I don't know if you had a chance to see the TV license clip. Uh, it, it basically begins with uh, the TV license saying, person, I've got a warrant to enter your property. And this all comes from way of an act and the people on the doorstep say an act requires this uh, is, is, is a statute and it requires this, the consent of the governed it's not a law and the policeman agrees with them and good. Uh, they, uh, yeah he's a good copper actually you should watch the clip he, and by the end of it he's saying um, look this is a you know the, the people on the doorstep are saying this is a civil matter officer this is not a criminal matter and your yeah. oath states that you uphold common law and get involved in criminal matters and not civil matters and promote uh, that man to, to, to uh, inspector oh, you, oh I would but you yeah. sure know he's going to be after that clip's gone uh, viral uh, he's going to be getting uh, desk duty you know the the, uh, the Bilderberg banking cartel that uh you know have taken control of our pol upper end echelons of our political system that give the orders down to the police you know they don't want pe good people like that working for them but but my well, point the is, is a, lot of the, a lot of the policemen are good people yep. and, and all right a lot of them have, have been trained to a point of ignorance and, and yep. they are educating themselves by watching the videos so we've got to yep. be we've got to be respectful of, of the fact that they haven't been trained properly yep. um it's it's the it's our burden to, to, to train them as opposed to, you know, them getting training from their, their senior officers. A lot of the senior officers have, have moved on and discussed, quite frankly. I've spoken yeah. to a lot of them. So have I, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the point is that, that, you know, the videos are available to them. They're watching the videos. They're asking questions. We've seen online the police talking, and there's two police officers at the moment who are being prosecuted, a private criminal prosecution, and... and they're being prosecuted because they thought they could kick someone's door down without a warrant. They're now behind, the, you know, or at least they're in the dock. And the one thing that was said on these police um, chat rooms was, it makes you think about what you're doing, yeah? Yeah, that's so, great. I think that's not just advice for the police, but advice for 
every human being on this planet. Have a think Absolutely. about what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, there's no important thing about one of the, the, the things I said some time ago is one of the most important words that you should understand in, the, in this language is the word consent. Mm -hmm. and, and that word consent is being discussed by the police at the moment. And when, when, you, when you ask a policeman, are, are we policed by consent? And they will always say yes. You say, well, how is it you get my consent? You draw a blank because they don't understand how it is they get consent. They assume that consent is a general thing because it's a nonsense. Nobody can consent on my behalf. Only I can consent, and if I can consent, I can therefore withdraw my consent. And, of course, that doesn't, that doesn't mean I can go running amok and, and, and breaking the law. What it means is I have a, a, a right to, to withdraw from the society if I feel that society has become onerous, oppressive, which it has. So we need, we need to understand the difference between the statutes and the laws. So um, the, this, uh, these people on the doorstep say that um, anything that's passed by an Act of Parliament is, requires the consent of the governed. Is that, 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 that the policemen seem to think that's accurate. Uh, is that accurate, Roger Hayes? Absolutely, and, and it's, it's pretty logical if you, if you think about it. Um, you ask the government, do they govern by consent? Yes, they do. Who makes statutes? The government. You can't actually have a statute that has more authority than its maker. So if the government govern by consent, then all statutes are by consent. Now, again, that doesn't mean that you can go running around um, um, doing whatever you want because you are subject to the law. The law, common law, protects you protects your property and and that's the difference the difference between laws is they protect statutes control and and therein lies the subtle but very very distinct difference one is a controlling tool statutes and if you want to be controlled right then you can consent to being controlled but if you don't want to be controlled then you can actually withdraw your consent it means you've, you've got to make up arrangements with, with probably a lot of other things, but that's a very long story for, for another day. Is that, the point. is that written somewhere in the legal law books that an act of parliament requires the consent of the governed? Is that, is that written down? Is that an, a, a definite fact that you can go and look up? Uh, well, it, it has been quoted um, a, a number of times. I've never gone to the trouble of, of delving into ancient law books or, or whatever to, 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 to find that definition. I believe it's a definition. I've not seen it myself. But it, it doesn't matter that it's not in writing because there is a maxim, and the maxim is that we are governed by consent, and, and therefore statutes are most definitely by consent. It can be no other way. As I say, you can't, you can't have a statute that has more authority than the, the creator of that statute. And that's, that, again, is a maxim. So, mm. so you can be quite sure, quite comfortable with the reality that we are all governed by consent and statutes made by government are, are subject to our consent. People can argue um, what that consent is and how it's achieved. And that, of course, will we'll bring into the argument of the legal fiction. Yes. I know. I don't want to go down the road of the legal fiction no. because it, <laughs> it, it, one, it's very complicated, and two, I just think it's a little legal game that we don't need to play with these people because we can just say, we are the people, we are the power. Uh, your little little funny laws that you've made and corporations and all things like that. It's, it, it is very interesting to see how we are all technically employees of a corporate state, but we don't need to go down that road. We the people are in charge, and you are the public servants. You will do as we say. We don't need to play I, I any think, more games than that, I think. I think one of the important things is as we are challenging the high courts, when we feel the high courts are, are breaking the law, then we have to be on solid ground. And the only way to find out whether you're on solid ground is to challenge the High Court. Now, I was in court on Monday, mm -hmm. last, last Monday, and we put in a seven-page document um, which informed the High Court that we were challenging the authority of the High Court and we were challenging the legitimacy of the judge. So we're not messing around, are we? So we're mm -hmm. going for the jugular. As a direct consequence of that document, um, and we were in the court in the afternoon, the security was increased and the police were called. So lots of 
of intimidation as he walked into that court. Mm -hmm. What transpired then was that the judge gave me an instruction in the High Court. I refused to comply because I was challenging his legitimacy. He would not answer my questions. What questions he, were they? Well, it was, <laughs> it was about the, the right of an individual to have a common law advocate in the court and the right under our constitution for an individual to be to have a, a jury trial before he's put in prison. This guy was being, um, the threat was he was going to be put in prison because of a contempt of court issue, which we obviously challenged. And what we're talking about here is corruption in the high court, and we'd exposed it. We were challenging the judge, and we were saying we will not have a judge deal with this because we're dealing with judicial corruption. We want a jury trial. Everyone has the right to a jury trial, don't they? I mean, I well, believe no, that if someone's convicted... being denied, this is the whole point. And this is being denied because of the consent thing, and I hate to mention it, but also because of the legal fiction thing. So we put, we put the argument in front of the, the, the court, but what we also did, when the police arrived, I got a hold of the chief constable there and said, what you need to know, it is my democratic right to challenge the authority of the high court and for them to, to uphold their authority, and two, to, to challenge the legitimacy of the judge. That is my democratic right, and I will be doing that here today. It's going to be very robust, but I'm not going to be unlawful, and I'm not going to be unpeaceful. And this is what happened, right? The judge ran out of the court. He sent a message for the security to remove me. I told the security if they laid a finger on me, I'd sue them. <laughs> and then the judge asked the police to move in. The police came in, and I said to the police, I'm not moving from this position because I have a right to be here. And the police wouldn't arrest me. Good so for the police. The, high court, the judge wouldn't come back in. <laughs> the, the security wouldn't move me, and the police wouldn't arrest me. Marvellous, and, Roger. And, and the point I'm making is, who does that tell you who was right and who was wrong? Absolutely. It, it tells you everything. So, so this is what's going on. We have corrupt judges in the High Court. We have corrupt judges who, when they're being challenged, are refusing to have juries because they know what the juries will find. And that's the corruption that's going on in our High Courts at the moment. It's happening in all the courts. You, did, he, uh, did he send a letter back after he'd done a runner into the courtroom saying, I'm not going home, we're going home now, I'm not going to play with Roger because I find him vexatious, just like my colleague found him vexatious. Roger well, what is a very vexatious <laughs> human being. <laughs> well, what they do, of course, and this is, this is, this is where they, they still have the upper hand, which we've got to, we've got to um, challenge them on. Yeah. Um, I had no choice. But we couldn't just have a stand-up all day. So I declared that the court had been abandoned, that the hearing was over. Um, I left. You know, the, you know, the police were polite. The, the police were doing it. Once again, the police were doing their jobs. So we, we've got to take our hats off to the good guys here. Yeah. Um, as soon as we had gone, the judge came out and made a ruling and declared that this gentleman should go to prison for three months. Because we realized that was exactly how it was going to go, um, he, he was on a plane to Spain. So... <laughs> We now have to take out a, a, a criminal prosecution against. Now, when that guy came in that courtroom yeah. and there was no jury, he wasn't a judge. He was an administrator. Yeah. As an administrator, he's not protected by the law if he breaks the law. So we're going to take out a criminal prosecution against that administrator because he's breaking the law. Brilliant. He's in defiance of Magna Carta, in defiance of our constitution, he's in defiance of our rights, and that's the guy that should be in prison. But What's this guy's name? Are you allowed to name him on air? Uh, Judge Pelling. Judge Pelling? Or, or in that particular case, um, non Judge Pelling. Pelling. Yeah, yeah non Judge Pelling. Yeah, yeah. Administrator Pelling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> lackey Pelling. Yeah. Um, so, so you, that's what's happening. That's the latest on this. So, so it all ended with uh, the defendant uh, on a plane uh, to Spain. It ended with the police not arresting you. Good uh, hats off to the police officers. And it ended, it's ending with this uh, judge acting like a joke, but he wasn't. And you're going to call him up for it and bring criminal charges against him. That's how that, that story wraps up so far, is it? That's right. And, and one of the tactics that we're learning is, is that 
when we have a claim against a one of the judiciary, um, we should do it through a third party because that that actually sidesteps the vexatious uh, litigant argument because you're doing it on behalf. Now, the other key and important thing is that um, we we do have a right as representatives in the courts, but they are they come up the, the lawyers have come up with this rule that says that you have no right of audience in the court. Well. That's unlawful, and I'll tell you why it's unlawful, because we are all equal in the eyes of the law, and if a barrister can represent somebody in court, so can I. Because yeah. it's, just, it's, just it's just a protection racket, isn't it? Yes. And that's, that's, that, was why, that was one of the issues that the judge said, um, ran out of the court. He, he said that you have no right of audience, and said, yes, I do, I'm claiming common law jurisdiction, and I'm a common law advocate. And he said, sit down, I said, is that an order, is that a request? <laughs> To and he wouldn't replied. Ask the question because he can't order me. He can only request me. And if he'd, if he'd requested me, I'd have said, no, I'm not sitting down until he answers the question. Yeah. Yeah, well, you obviously bug them because you play the game that they're playing, uh, but you play it better simply because the law really is on your side. Well, the one in the right. had, had, had the authority been with the High Court, I'd have been in jail. Absolutely. So to bring back the first one of the criminal prosecution against it, and they said you were vexatious. Is that where it ends, or is there? No, no. How I'm can that end there? That, that's uh, injustice. I'm going to use a third party who's going to represent me in the court, so that they can't claim vexatious. Oh, so you're going to do So that's the tactic we've learned from from this process. Uh, so and I will be charging um, the administrator that put me in prison without a, a, a hearing without notice, um, absolutely criminal intent, with uh, perverting the course of justice, unlawful imprisonment, and so on and so forth. I'm going to have his, his um, um, scalp, as they say. So, so these, these people need to realize that the law is to protect those. It's not there uh, as, a, as a, um, you know, a milking cow f for their benefit. Uh, and yeah. I think that the, the corruption has gone on far too long, and it's, it's now far too entrenched, and that their arrogance is, is, is absolutely extreme. So, you know, and, you know, even if you talk to ordinary, um, a lot of the legal profession, that they, they, they don't actually understand what we're getting on about. We have rights, but they don't seem to understand that. They think that, you know, that their statutes are superior to common law. Because that's how they're being trained these days. Yeah. These are issues that I'll have to bring up next time I get uh, Martin Underhill on the show. Uh, for our listeners who were listening last year, Martin was running as an independent police commissioner and he, he won down in Dorset. Very good man. Is these people that we need in the police. So I'm gonna, I'd love to um, have him on the show and, it, with his permission, put you in touch to see if you can... Well, what you need to do is, is, of course, deal with that memorandum of association between the police and the court. It should be completely stopped. It's inappropriate because it allows for, for corruption in the courts and, and senior police officers. Yeah. Oh, well, that's an update on the latest of Roger Hayes' court cases. That every time I speak to you, you're involved in another one, as you should be, because you're one of the few people on the front line of the legal system in this country fighting tyranny, which is undoubtedly coming down upon us now. I want to just move to you in other issues. Uh, we had this news this week that RBS uh, is having a lawsuit brought against him on a, because it fraudulently lied about its assets when it was raising money in a rights issue. I remember that. Um, I was a shareholder in TSB at the time, uh, watching the rights issue of R RBS, seeing how things would well, go. Well, the it turns line. out they lied. Yeah, it turns out really they the, the Bank of the Earth, they, oh, did, they did lie, Roger. Oh, what a surprise. The same people that brought us LIBOR. Yeah, the, yes. those good, honest yeah. guys. So, um, the, thing about, the interesting thing about this is, is that LIBOR, right, the bank is being sued, that was a criminal offence. Yeah, it was. Right? So, so when, when we commit a criminal offence, it's you and I that goes to jail, oh. but when the when the bankers commit a criminal offence, their bank pays a fine. Yeah, you know, obviously. What's that all about? That is one law for them and the other law for us. And if, if somebody has lied, right, and if somebody has lied to, to actually... If get like, money, that's fraud. Get money, it's, to, it's fraud. So it's not the, the, the bank that should be held to account, it's the individual who actually orchestrated the deceit and he should be in the dock for fraud well we're going to move on to that uh, fred goodwin is being tried personally uh, mm -hmm. but he's using taxpayers money to uh, 
as defence because he's being defended along with the bank. So he, you know, because they said you can't really try Fred Goodwin alone. You got to try him along with the bank. But when I say try, you know, it's, it, I, you know, it, it, I don't think you're going to see anyone sent down for this kind of thing. You see, but the point I wanted to make was uh, when they were found guilty, they they paid a fine. Yeah. Uh, and when I say they, I mean the bank, not Fred personally. I believe that trial's still up in the air. Um, but what, the only point I'm trying to make on this is the fine was paid by the bank, and and, and the bank is funded by the taxpayers. So the yeah. taxpayers uh, said the taxpayers effectively uh, ba- gave money to RBS shareholders who were lied to. You know, uh, that, that was what they found. Uh, the bank was f- uh, fined effectively for. Uh, lying to its shareholders and the the money was uh, pumped in by the taxpayer. So the taxpayer well, I, you know, I, I'm annoyed about that because banks don't lie. If the bank is a piece of paper, it's people who lie. Yes. And therefore it's fraud. So, so yes. you know, we, we, it, it's another one of these classic situations where the institutions uh, are protected, the individuals in the institutions are protected, and we don't get justice. Uh, completely. Um, and uh, as a result, the the taxpayer has uh, been able to uh, fork out for the uh, to the RBS for for their fraudulent goings on. But um, my local wing down at the hospital has had to be um, closed down and moved to a local other hospital in Hastings. And, and again, we see the bankers who've uh, in charge of the loss making bankers uh, banks uh, getting their bonuses from taxpayer money. Roger, what do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, you're referring about these bonuses. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, making bankers owned by the taxpayer, R- RBS and Lloyd's, uh, are the, uh, the culprits. They're still playing bonuses out, and uh, they for making losses, and uh, they're still taking. Ta- well, they have taken taxpayers' money. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 payoff money, really. I think a lot of that's to do with keeping them quiet because the, 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 these bankers know what's going on, and, and uh, I think they they could um, embarrass a lot of people in, in the. Uh, higher echelons of the bank. Let, let, let's, let's cover exactly what is going on with these, these bonuses, because the, the, during the, the, the First World War, the government issued its own money, mm-hmm. saving the taxpayers a lot of tax because, you know, there was no interest. At the moment, the government is, is actually borrowing through the banks, which it doesn't need to do. So we're paying the banks £50 billion pounds in interest that we do not have to pay them if the government organize it in a different way. Yes. That's the bonus that, that the bankers are getting. They're getting taxpayers' money that they don't need to get or shouldn't be getting if the government rearranges its affairs in the, in the proper way. So that's what the bonuses are all about. It's criminal. Yes, um, I remember oversee you know, the Bank of England and the bankers getting their money and all things like that and uh, the, the Bank of England having its... Um, private shareholders as well that we're not allowed to know about and of course you look at over the pond you've got the federal reserve which is a completely admitted private entity uh, run by private shareholders and um, there was one president that tried to do away with that with executive order 11110 uh, issuing the currency again like you've just said uh, from the government itself rather than a private institution and that, uh, can you guess what president that was uh, the, the one they shot. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the two they shot, because Abraham Lincoln did exactly the same, the green bank. Yeah. He was advised by a banker, and the banker told him that he could issue his own money, green bank, free of interest, uh, because at that time, the bankers were trying to charge Abraham Lincoln 33%. At the end of the war, Abraham Lincoln had learned a trick that he could issue his own money. The bankers didn't want that, so they, they bumped him off. Mm-hmm. Kennedy was exactly the same um, when he, he, he um, was trying to issue his own money, they bumped him off as well. So there's a, there's a message in there somewhere that's probably why um, the, the government won't uh, issue our own money because there, there, there's a few people scared of getting bumped off. So having seen all these good people bumped off for issuing their own money, that's a wonderful link into your lawful bank, Roger. The lawful bank, which is about issuing our own money, um, <laughs> because we can do You've so. You've got your and, gravestone and, yet? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got I've got my sort of uh, uh, security up here at the moment. So, I think the point about the lawful bank, which is very very different, is is not being done by a pyramid scheme. It's being done at community level, which mm. means it's not me or one person. It's it's literally. 
communities across the United Kingdom. And we are putting together the, the, the mechanism, how it will work, uh, explaining why it will work, and, and at some point in time, hopefully within the next couple of months, we will have our first uh, branch open, which is going to be an Internet branch, Mm -hmm. um, and once that's up and running, you know, the thing will just grow from there. Yep. But, you know, if they bump me off, then there's someone else that, yep. that has all the information and someone behind him, behind him. So it's, it's, it's beyond their control to stop this now. It's now in the, it's now literally in the hands of the people. It's about the power of the people. The power of the people, which is the knowledge and the inclination to actually coordinate our actions. That's what, that's what the power of the people is about. And we're hoping that people will, you know, stand with us, give us their support, and, and this thing will happen. And yeah. once we're in control of our own issuance of money, once we're in control of our, our own money supply, we will actually take control of everything else that's important in our lives, including the courts. Everything's about the money, isn't it? Yeah, it all comes down to the money. Now, what we're going to do, Roger... The British Constitution Join the revolution Lawful rebellion Our right The British Constitution We stand for a future we control Our heritage lies in free men's souls We fight to conquer Britain's foes The British Constitution The British Constitution 